see what we can do with it. Okay guys, this is that air compressor. <clears throat> I bought this, I think I did a flea market find, I bought it at the flea market uh, about two years ago-ish, and this thing has always done me well, and I noticed here lately it had a knock in it, look at that, someone has tried to shim that, and that is crap there, I don't know what they've done there, uh, so the first thing we're going to do, so we're going to take this wheel off of here, this flywheel, yeah. and hopefully it didn't ruin the shaft. Uh, the wheel's no good, I'll have to try to find something, the equivalent to that, because <clears throat> this is a good old air compressor. I've got it run into this big old tank here, that's the welder, but I've got it run into this to run my power tools now. Her dad said I can have his. He's got a great big one. It's bigger than this. I don't even know. I'm not sure if it's 220 or not. But uh, but until I can get that out here. Yeah, I see the keyways all. Uh, until I can get it out here. You know, what am I going to use? Left. So I may pull the pump off of, off of this one. This one I'm going to make a little wood burning stove out of. Uh, I got to make sure the pumps run in the right direction. And I may just pull this pump off and put it on here. So let me grab a wrench. Now let's pull this, uh, pull that big wheel off there and see if the shaft is okay. Now what I've done before in them shafts um, is I have welded them and then kind of like milled them off but hand milled them, you know, with a file. Um, so let's, uh, let's get that off of there and, and see what we can do with it. I think this, it's a Craftsman, I'm not sure what year it is. Uh, maybe we'll check and see there's some numbers on the back. I'm not sure to tell what year it is. I'm guessing probably 50s, 60s. If anyone has one that's similar and knows the year, please comment below. Let me know so we got an idea. Um, I gave 40 bucks for this. Guy wanted 50. I said, look, dude, I ain't going to give you 50 for it. There was nowhere to plug it in. He says, I guarantee it works. You'll like it. I said, well, you know, they don't tell me anything. See that keyway there? I said, I'll give you 40 bucks for it to take a chance. Finally, he said, oh, all right. Because I did the walk away. Because he was like, well, I don't know. I said, well, that's all right. You know, sorry to waste your time. I started walking away, me and Monkey, and he was like, oh, wait a minute, okay, I'll, I'll take 40 for it, I guess. I said, look, I don't want to break you, you know. Well, there's assholes kind of like that, but if he could have plugged it in right there and showed me it ran, I would have gave him 50, but I had no idea. Okay, so, see, this is all wallowed out. Looks like they've tried to make a spacer in there, and it's got a crack there. Um... But it looks to me like the shaft Okay, we got lucky the shaft's good, so I I see this is cast iron. I could I can uh maybe find another one of these, maybe online at the scrapyard or something, I don't know. Looks like that seal may be leaking a little bit, but you can get them seals. Um uh, but I still want to keep it because it's so cool. Um, so what we're going to do though is I think I'm going to go ahead and take the pump off of here and take one on, take the pump off the other one. I got to make sure it's going to turn the right way, and then we'll put pump on here. Okay, this has got nuts on the bottom, 
and screws I don't know how I'm going to get my hand up in there to hold these to keep these from turning so uh, first let's get this unhooked up here and make sure that T will screw into the other into here and we'll go from there this okay these have no nuts on the bottom so these should be okay uh, this thing is very quiet the motors quiet I may put the motor on it too Uh, what is it? It's half a horsepower. I'm not sure what this one is. I thought it was a half a horsepower. It's got this information down here on it. Right there. So, let me see. Uh, shit. Okay, let me go ahead and get this take. Shit. Get this taken off for you. And we'll go from there. Okay guys, so what it says on the back, I don't know if you caught it when I pinned you back there, but it's a Craftsman Sears and Roebuck from the Sears and Roebuck Company. Now, a lot of you guys probably know, but some of you may not, that they used to have a catalog you could order this stuff through and get it sent right to your home. It's called the Sears and Roebuck Company. Uh, they, you, you could even get rowboats. You know, small boats, stuff like that, hand tools. There was all different kinds of stuff you could get through Sears and Roebuck. Now, that's why I'm thinking this may be from the 50s. I've already got these loosened up. I've got the four screws down on the bottom loosened. Okay, so... Uh, this. Okay. See, I got this loosened up. Um, just taking these these bottom ones out. Let me get you backed up a little bit. I kind of got you ways away, but let's see. All right. Uh, man, these being a uh, straight, you know, standard head screws man they were a pain to get loose I couldn't find well I found I thought I had a great big handle great big long handle screwdriver that was straight but it turned out it be it was a Phillips but yeah these uh these were a pain so apparently they've got weld nuts on the bottom which is good and a weld nut is just just what it says it's it's a nut welded on the bottom which sometimes are cool in this situation. That's pretty much what you got to do. But if you ever strip them out, it sucks. Or sometimes, like if you go to loosen one, it's in there real tight. Sometimes the welds will break, and then you got that nut on the bottom spinning around, and you can't get back up in here to hold it. So you got to try to find some way to get underneath there to cut it. And so it's got its ups and downs. Right, but the good thing is the shaft's not hurt on this thing. Okay? Now, I took one of these. I made a steam engine out of one. And I also made a gasoline running engine out of one of these before. It didn't run great, but I did it. Okay, so let's go and set this to the side. We'll go out here. The other one's the same way. You just take the, take the line off of it and the four screws that one has bolts and uh, we're going to set it on here first I got to make sure it's spinning the right way and then uh, and we'll go from there hang tight okay we have a dilemma if you look down in here one bolt will line up the other three will not now I could cut this base plate off there's only three welds on each side I really don't want to do that to this thing and mount the other one on here if I have to I will but one of the reasons is I still haven't got any wire for the welder and I don't have his uh, his arc welder 
out here stick welder um, so what I can do for now but see also this is not going to line up with that pulley see this is set back in uh, I could probably take this this out a little bit or even spin this pulley around I think I, I can make it line up so what I'm going to do is I don't like to do this kind of stuff but I'm going to put one bolt in there and I'm going to drill I can't drill this one out because then I would be drilling down in to my other threads I don't want to do that but I need an air compressor so this one I can drill out and this one I can drill out and I can put nuts on there maybe Oh, I don't know. See, it's still kind of close to that that weld nut that's on the bottom of there. I'm not sure how I'm going to remedy this. Uh, and of course, this is going to be way too... See, the other one's real tall. This one's real short. Um, I would like to get another, another uh, wheel for that. That would be nice and keep this original but I mean if worse came to worse I could cut that off of there and just use the uh, base plate off the other one tack welded on here I mean I could always put it back together but it's not really worth it for you know a fifty sixty dollar machine uh, I just thought it was cool it's not like I said it's not like it's worth a thousand dollars because it's an antique it is old but it's cool but I kinda like to leave stuff the way it is so I don't know uh, looks like this shaft on here is a bigger shaft than this but I may go ahead and pull this pulley off and see if it'll fit on there but from the looks of it I do not think it will um, I doubt it this looks like a, a smaller shaft here um, all right let me do some thinking let's see where we can go from here I know there's no way I can fix this um, if I had some machining tools like a lathe, I could fix that, but I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna try to bushing that up because, like I said, I don't want to ruin that shaft on that other one because the pump's still fine. Hmm. Let me see what I can come up with. All right, this is what I have come up with. All right, I have this. Coming out of the pump, it's going to go straight into here. Do it like that. I know it's ugly, but it's just temporary, right? I mean, I could put it on the side. I may do that. I don't know. We'll see. And put the uh, gauge right on top. Not sure about that yet. Now we're going to, for that, we're going to take this. We're gonna, this will screw down into here, like so. Okay, I gotta take that, this off, and I'll screw this on, get it nice and tight. Then, we need to run this down here to this, so I'll have to put an extension cord onto, onto that, no big deal. I know what you're saying, wow, you gonna block that off? You gonna block that off? No, I'm not, because that tank's not even gonna be used. Okay, uh, I'm not going to use the tank because I think this is going to be big enough for what I need to do. If not, then I'll hook this tank back up. But I, you know, kind of want to keep, because this is good for 100 pound, 100 PSI. Now the other one I had it jacked up to 140, so I don't know if this one will go that, that much or not. And the reason why I want to keep this switch hooked up is for the shut off, is what if I plug it in to let air build up and I forget about it. Okay, it's just going to keep running until... It burns the motor up probably what would happen it would never blow this tank but it probably just keep running until until the motor blew up till the motor seized up on it or burn up or whatever so this is what we're going to do next I want to put some uh, some of this tape on there and yeah so that's what we're going to do um, we're going to get this put on and we'll hook up the uh, I'm not going to bore you with it because all it does is screw in till it's tight. Same way with this. 
and that's where our air hose is going to screw in which will hang up here so oops. so that's yeah that's I'm not going to bore you with that I'm just going to put some tape around there I want to screw this unit into here and I'm going to screw this this uh, regulator back onto here which the regulator came off the old one and this and this is cool because it's I can shut the air off right here at my hose if my hose blows which happens you just flip that over and that shuts your air off to your hose um, and this this regulator here will regulate how much um, air I'm putting through the hose see it's screwed in because I use this mostly for um, for like lug nuts and stuff like that then you unscrew it out if you know if you want to um, uh, like you use, use an air gun or something you know a spray gun for like painting stuff like that this has got a pop-off valve on it which I like which does work because I have tested that and it does pop off uh, like it's supposed to after it gets to a certain PSI um, so yeah let me go ahead and do that and then I'll be back with you hang tight guys okay guys this is what we got going on here we got this coming out of the pump feeder line it's going straight into this I couldn't put it on the side because those were the wrong size fittings and I got my gauge it's going to tell me how much is in the tank I've got my gauge here it's going to tell me how much I'm pushing through the line this is where we'll adjust this at right up here got a pop off valve in the back down under there there is an extra pop off valve there I've got the cover for this. I'm going to leave the cover off because I may have to adjust that nut. Now that that determines like how much air pressure when it comes up. You adjust that. Like if you want it to shut off at 80, you adjust this nut here. And when this gets up to 80 pounds in the tank, it flips this switch here. Okay, see? There's a switch there. It'll kick it on. And when it builds up pressure, you know, this is spring loaded and that'll kick it off okay so let me get you set up here and we'll I'm gonna go over here and plug it in and let's see see it's very very quiet okay Check the leaks, like I said, we'll check our pop off valve here. Okay, and we're going to check check our air pressures. Okay, but first, let's let it build up some pressure. Oh, I also took the the drain, the petcock, off the bottom of that green tank, and I put it on here so we can drain water if we have to I like to do that every so often so alright guys let's let it run a while and see what happens okay so it's been running about a minute and a half but I just wanted to show you this see this valve here this is what I like about this slider valve here because right now it's off as you can see nothing's coming out of the pop off but if I turn this on push it that way I shut it off. Just drains what's in the hose. So that's pretty cool. So again, let's let it, it's, it's already starting to build up some air pressure. So, alright. We're already up to 20 pounds. Cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get it get up to around 100 pounds. I think that'll be plenty. But let's let it run a minute. We'll have to come up with something different, or a different hose or something for that. So let me get that fixed up. This is the original hose off of that thing. <laughs> and I mean original, as in it's probably been on there, 
maybe not since it was new, but probably oh, 20, 30 years, I imagine. Okay, let me get that fixed. Okay, so this is what I came up with. Put a clamp on it, cut the bad end out. I don't recommend that, I hate doing that, but I had to do it on this at one time. Right there. But like I said, temporary because I, I really need this air compressor. So hopefully, hopefully this will work. I got this thing, but one of the ends, see, two or three threads. I wouldn't trust this, and I don't think it's 100 pounds anyway. I know this will do 140, but it may not do it now, so I'm only going to keep it at 100 pounds. And what I'll do, is I'll wrap me a piece of wire around that, so that way in case it pops off, you know, same way as up here, it's not flapping all over the place. So, yeah, we've already got 10 pound in there. Alright. Let's try this again. Alright guys. This is what I came up with, but I still don't think it's going to work. Because I think what's doing it is that air coming out of there gets really hot. That's hot. I can't, I can't touch it. I think it's causing the, um, the hoses to get weak and pop. So, I'm going to have to get, I'd like to use a steel line and go from here over to this, come right out of here into this tank like it does when it comes out of here and goes down into that. That's what I think I'm going to do, is run steel. Uh, this one actually had aluminum and this one had copper. I'd rather run steel if I'm going that far, but I don't know. We'll just have to see. And that's what I'm going to do with that. So, I mean, right now, you know, that give me, you know, enough to at least blow off parts, you know, carburetors and stuff like that. At least till we can get her dad's out here. Cause it's huge like I say it may be 220 I'm not sure but it's you know it's a lot bigger than this one but anyway so there you go guys so just kind of messing around in the garage a little bit trying to do a project but I do know it'll hold 40 pound without without blowing the line so that's plenty to blow off carburetors and stuff. I got one on the desk right now I need to blow off and I can't because I don't have a an, an air compressor. So, But that'll work good enough for that until we get his out here or until I get a piece of line or something. I'd like to, like I said, steel. I'd like to run steel on it. But if I can't, I will run copper. But, so, anyway, at least we got it working. And uh, it's very quiet, so... Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with in the garage with me today and shooting shit. So, but yeah, I think that's what it's doing because that hose, those hoses aren't for heat. You can't, you can't let them get hot like that. So, that's what I got to thinking. So, I put that regulator over on there thinking maybe that was going to take away some of the heat, but it didn't. So, um, it just takes a lot longer to build that heat up, but it's still, that's what's going on with that. I never did like that, that that hose running across there like that anyway but you do what you got to do sometimes so we'll get it straightened out and uh hopefully i can get her dad's in here and you know we'll just just run that and uh get this old thing here back together because i do like that thing <laughs> so see what see what we can do with that i'm i may just go ahead and take that that base plate and that head unit off of there and put on this tank and uh, it's a 12 gallon tank we'll just have to see I just love doing stuff like this so again thanks for watching Shea Bear the myth the man legend I'm gone for now bye bye guys take care